You're not clapping for me. Clap for yourself. Because you didn't have to do this. All right? All right. All right. I'm glad to be here tonight. Listen, just say you're glad to be here. I'm going to start off by saying, say I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be here. No, again, you're not doing it for me. You're not doing it for me. All right? Say that I'm glad to be here tonight. I'm glad to be here tonight. Now pretend that Jesus was in the house. And he asked you to say, you're glad to be in the house tonight. I want you to say that like he was standing here. Remember, you're not doing it for me. You're doing it for yourself. Because when you clap, you're actually all working out. My background is in exercise science and biology and physiology, and I noticed that when you clap, you're actually working out. All these muscles up in the chest, they get the heart rate up, so you're really working out. So when you have an opportunity to clap for yourself, just work out, all right? But when I'm saying that you're happy to be here, there is something about that joy that is unspeakable and full of, finish it. Glory. Finish it. Glory. Glory. Whenever you function, you really are just giving God glory. I'm going to start off by saying welcome tonight to, it's not about me, it's about my friend, Sam. So I want you to stand up on your feet. Hold on for a minute. Every time you decide to move, you're giving him glory. I want you to take that seriously because there are people, if you don't believe me, there are people in the hospital right now, in the ICU right now, who can't even move. Who wish they can breathe like you are breathing. Don't take it lightly. Whenever you stand up, whenever you move, whenever you breathe, because the Bible said in him we live, move, and have our what? Being. So I want you to stand up like you're happy that you're alive. That you is well with you, is well with your soul. And I want you to give yourself the biggest round of applause. And I want you to appreciate my man Sammy for what he has done. I mean, I don't want you to pretend. I know we're in church, but I don't want you to play church. Because what I'm about to talk to you tonight is about being real. It's not about religion. It's about a relationship. The relationship begins with you and God. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I want you to stand up. I want you to rise up. Just rise up. That's rise up. You feel good, you know? You're, you're, you're excited, you're happy, you're healthy. You can do this stuff right here. Michael Jackson, he's in the grave, but you know, I know he used to move like this. You know what I'm saying? So every time you move from this moment on, move with purpose. Clap with purpose. All right? Put your hand together for you. One, two, three, go. And give Jesus a round of applause. All right. Now we win. Now we win. Now you can gracefully sit on down. Gracefully sit on down. All right. I want to give honor to who honor is due. The first lady and the pastor of the house. We thankful for him having, making this possible for us to be here today. And we thank God for giving us the breath of life. Thank my two sons back there, Alan and TJ, my wife, in the house. We here to support Sammy today. This is his day, you know? And when you talk about the miracle of you, what a name for a book. You are a miracle, because you didn't have to be here today. Mama carried you for nine months, and then it's a miracle that you didn't die inside. You are a miracle. Every time you take a breath, it's a miracle. And if you don't believe me, I spend many times in the hospital working with patients, and some of, some of them are, they have that COPD. And basically it's a chronic lung problem where they can't breathe, then they have to breathe through a tube. Every time that, ooh, ooh, it's laborious for them to actually breathe. For you to just, let me tell you, there is freedom in that. There is freedom in that. There are people who are begging to breathe today. Begging. They walk around with their little oxygen tank. <gasps> Go look it up on the internet if you don't believe me. The fact that you can breathe freely, that's a miracle. There's a quote from the book that I want to throw out to my man Sammy. It said, the world, 
The world is waiting on your dreams and your visions and the purpose that is instilled within you. What are you waiting on? What are you waiting on? Say with me, it's time. It's time. No, no, I don't want you to say it for me, say it for you. It's time. It's, it's time. time. Say again, it's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's for time. you to give the world what God has deposited in you. Come on. Amen. A mentor of mine, a great speaker, Dr. Miles Monroe said, the wealthiest place on earth is the graveyard. Mm -hmm. I struggled with that for months. Talked to the Lord with that for months. I said, this is my mentor. I can't go against him. The Lord said, it used to be. It no longer is. The wealthiest place on earth is no longer the graveyard. Because those people who have gone on can no longer shake Sammy's hand. Can no longer greet a brother. Can no longer greet a sister. Can no longer look at the lame and lift them up to another height. The chapter is finished. It's over for them. Hence, the greatest place on earth and the wealthiest place on earth, you're sitting right next to them. Why don't you give them a high five? Why don't you give them a high five? Because you just never know what they can become. You never know. My undergrad is in uh, medical biology, and one thing that we learn is that stem cells are one of the most powerful cells on planet Earth. Why? Because they can become anything. They use them to cure cancer, to treat cancer, so to speak. Anything you want, a stem cell can give it to you. You're looking at stem cells all over this room tonight. Don't count them out. You just never know what they can become. Right. I've written this book under the unction of the Holy Spirit. I was working on my doctorate in physical medicine and the Lord had a different plan. He said instead of a degree, you gotta write this book because you have to transform the lives of the PhDs and the doctors who think they've got it all. And the scientists who think because they can put an experiment together then they are the greatest thing next to sliced bread. He said, no, there is greater. This book is called The Anatomy, based on my background, Anatomy and Physiology. It's called The Anatomy of the Kingdom and the Power of Community. And I didn't understand it. It took me six and a half years to get that book done. And I did some research and I found out that the Bible made many references about the body itself. You are a replica of the kingdom on earth. If God wants to do something in the earth, he doesn't come down and do it. He does it through you. The dead is over. That's the reason why you are the greatest and the wealthiest place on earth. He's going to do it through you. Because he said he lived and he moved through you. That's how he gets the glory. All right? So when I was putting this book together, he said that somebody is a hand, somebody is a heart, somebody is a brain, somebody is the digestive system, somebody is the leg, somebody is the eye, somebody is the nose, somebody is the diaphragm. All these are organs that I'm talking about, right? And when you assemble them, guess what happened? You got God's image in motion. How many of y'all are believers in the house? Amen. If you put your hand up, you are a believer. If you're thinking about it, you are a believer. Even if you didn't put your hand up, you believe something every time you breathe. The day when you stop believing is when you stop breathing. If you don't believe that the oxygen is going to keep you alive, don't breathe it. Leave it alone. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> I don't want it. And leave it alone. And see how long you live. I want to share a concept with you that's going to revolutionize the way you think about the kingdom of God. When I was writing this book and I shared the concept to Sammy, 
They said that most people, they have what's called a religion. That's what the world has given them, a religion. I go to church, I go home. I'm a good person. If I die, I'm going to go to heaven because I'm good. Why would the Lord want you in heaven? Because I'm a good person. Great. The king is more focused on a relationship, not a religion. Now, take my African brothers, for example. I went to school in the United States, so I got a chance to go to school with quite a bit of the African friends. And I, I gained some of the accent, so I'm going to try my best. I know that I'm predominantly around most of my African brothers and sisters. So I'm going to try to see as much as I can to um, reiterate how the conversation went. So let's say, for example, you're at your church, and you came because you came for a good word. Everybody say good word. Good word. I came for a good word. Good. But let's say, for example, I want to go to Africa. I want to go to Africa next week. And I left my church. You know, sometimes you left the church for a while, you went on vacation, and you come back, and then they say that you're back yeah. That ain't true, right? You could have had some financial problems. Just need to chill out. <laughs> you probably had some heartache. You just need to recap. <laughs> <laughs> the food food probably wasn't good, and you just need to have it seasoned a little bit more. In Jamaica, we call it turn on me. Y'all call it foo foo. That's why we all relate to You understand what I'm saying? Understand? So let's say, for example, I, I, I want to go home, right? But the thing is, I left my church. Do I still have any connection with God? In a religion, you don't. So let's say I'm going to let my brother hold on to this. This is a, a Cat 5 cable. Everybody know about internet? This is uh, probably, I would say, about four to five feet long. This is the length of my religion. This is the length of my religion. In the anatomy and the physiology, there is, shouldn't be a physical connection between you and God. It doesn't want that. That's called a religion. This is a medium by where the information travels through, right? God wants to wake you up at 4 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, 1 o'clock in the morning, any time in the morning. He wants to just wake you up and give you some info, some download into your system, into your spirit. But let's say, for example, um, you know, my African friend said, you know, I, I want to go to Africa. He calls me up on the phone and says, Andrew, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you right now. No, no, no more fufu. I want to talk to you. I said, I cannot talk to you right now. I'm trying to finish it. No, I want to talk to you now. I am going back to Africa. I am going back to Africa to visit my folks. But I am not sure about if God is going to be there. He will be. But the church, look at it as, if I am no longer attending, I am disconnected from God. Not so. Say again. Not so. Say it again. Not so. Say it again. <laughs> Say it again. I said, not so. Exactly right. Because if he's all powerful and he's everywhere at the same time, that means if he's God in Africa, if he's God in Canada, if he's God in Jamaica, he's God of the world, right? Yeah. He's the God of the universe. Dr. Miles said, before start, start, he already started, and start was in him before start got started. Amen. Come on. And if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, he never ends. One last thing I'm going to say to you. If you look up at the sky, in Jamaica we have a sky. In Canada we have a sky. And he showed me this revelation. I'm going to wrap up right now in 25 seconds. And I look up at the sky. If you want to see how great he is, you can never outwalk the sky. Oh, I don't like that part of the sky. I'm going to walk it out. I'm going over here. And you can continue to walk until the ends of the earth. It never ends. The length of your religion will end. The concentration of your relationship will never end. But your religion will end. What do I want you to understand? In the anatomy of the kingdom, it's about a relationship. Not about the label of your suit, what kind of church you go to. It's about the concentration of your relationship 
with the creator that is bigger than the sky. And the sky never ends. Do you understand? So I want you to give him, not me, give the creator that is bigger than the sky, bigger than the problem that you can ever have, a round of applause and give him glory and see. Come on back up here and do this thing. My name is Andrew Guy. Thank you for having me. He's not going nowhere. You have to tell us one more thing. You have to tell us to go. You got to tell us one more thing. I didn't get enough. I, the way you started, I wanted to go on and on and on and on. I just, do you guys agree? Do you guys agree? If there's one more word you got to leave us with, what is it going to be? Give me one quote, one word. Because you are a very educated man writing books. You have your mentors. I want to hear more. And I'll talk to you after. But if there's one more word or quote, what would you tell us? The quote is simply this. The kingdom in motion is God's purpose in action. The kingdom in motion is God's purpose in action. So whenever you don't move, he doesn't get the glory. Write this down for me, please. Write this down, please. I want you to write this down. Yeah, it's in my book too, so you can get it. Um, think about it. This is the physical structure, right? Right? So put S, which is structure, plus I, which is instruction, plus P, which is purpose, equal glory. So when the structure, the image of God is in motion, when it gets the instruction from the B-I-B-L-E, the basic instruction before leaving Earth. Earth, right? When it comes together and then you function, he gets the glory. Your job on Earth is not to have the best job everywhere. It's for everything you do, he gets the glory. Amen. If you stand up, if you jump, whatever you do, he gets the glory. Amen. If the enemy comes in your face and bam, and you give him a swift kick, he gets the glory. It's all about the glory of God, and that's my time. Thank you so much. Keep clapping, keep the honor, run over, stand on your feet. Clap, 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 clap. Clap, clap, clap. And do you understand that this is some free knowledge? <laughs>